Hi, Dr. Dave here. Do you have trouble planning and achieving good cue ball position? Do you have trouble running out when you think you should? Do you want to get a high score and win prizes in the PPC 100 Placement Pool Challenge? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then this video is for you. In a recent video, I revealed a Placement Pool Challenge to test and give you practice with your runout skills. This is the final part of a three video series dealing with the best ways to run the layouts in the challenge. I also discuss pattern play and cue ball positioning strategies that are important in any smart runout pool. This video covers layouts 13 through 18. This is the first of three nine ball layouts. Slight draw on the three sets up a perfect angle to stun to the five. It is best to leave an angle on the 5, as I'll show later, but if you can leave it straight in, you can easily roll forward to the 6. A stop shot here allows you to simply roll forward for the 8 and 9. It is a little dangerous trying to get straight on the 5, because if you come up a little short, you are heading away from the 6. And if you go a little long, it might be very difficult to get shape on the 6 at all. A better play is to leave a natural angle on the 5. There is a large margin for error with shot speed here. From this line, rolling the cue ball sends it perfectly into the line of the 6, again with a large margin for error with shot speed. If you end up with less angle on the 5, you can stun forward to get the right line into the 6. If you leave too much angle on the 6, you can just stun across the table to leave the 7 straight in the side. Going back to the 5, if you happen to end up on the wrong side, you might be able to slow roll to the short side of the 6. From there, you can hold for the 7. If you end up on the wrong side of the 7, you can just roll forward to the short side of the 8. If you have more angle on the 7, you can roll off the end rail to the long side of the 8. With an angle on the 8 like this, it is easy to roll across the table for the 9. If you end up with an angle like this on the wrong side of the 7, you can stun off the end rail to the 8. Like layout 8 in the previous video, layout 14 is one of the toughest runouts in the placement pool challenge. A slight angle on the 3 leaves a perfect angle on the 4 to draw off the side rail for a good angle on the 5. You want to make sure you leave an angle on the 6 so you can leave an angle on the 7 to easily head across the table for the 8. With an angle like this, soft stun works great. It is best to end up close to straight on the 8 so you can simply roll down for the 9. You can roll forward on the 4 instead of drawing it, but you will be coming across the line on the 5 and you will have less margin for error with shot speed. You need to be careful to not go too far or come up too short. Drawing more into the line of the shot is safer. There is a much larger margin for error with shot speed even if your angle isn't perfect. If you end up a little straight on the 7, you can follow forward with left spin to head toward the 8. With a bigger angle, you don't need side spin as verified by the 30 degree rule peace sign. That's an ideal angle to follow straight down for the 9. If you end up really straight on the 7, your only safe option is to roll forward and take your medicine with a tough shot on the 8. Here, you should visualize the shot and decide on the speed you want, either to go across the table to the near side of the 9 or to go twice across to the other side. Unfortunately, I didn't do this and ended up on the 50 yard line. Even when you have an angle on the 8 like this, you can still follow to the near side of the 9. At a bigger angle, following to the other side is natural. And with an even bigger angle, you can go across twice. That's what I should have done earlier instead of ending up on the 50 yard line. Layout 15 is the only one with an extra requirement. You must go off three rails to get from the 6 to the 7 and from the 8 to the 9. Because of this, this layout can be difficult for many players. Here, I am visualizing where I want to be for the 4-ball shot. It is easy to roll into this position from the short side of the 3. The whole purpose for the starting sequence was to leave the 5 fairly straight. A stop shot or slight draw leaves a perfect angle to achieve the required 3-rail path to the 7. 
Bottom right spin allows you to go above the center of the table to leave an angle on the 7. That's more angle than I need, but rolling this with outside spin heads into a perfect line for the 8. Bottom left spin sends the cue ball along a perfect 3 rail path to the 9. Even if you end up below the 5 a little, you can still hold for a good line on the 6 with a soft draw shot. The same applies if you end up above the 5 a little. If the angle below the 5 is too large to hold for the 6, you can come off the end rail with reverse spin. Ending up with a bigger angle on the 6 is fine. Even with a cut this thin, you can still get to the natural 3 rail path. It is tougher to aim the shot, but much less speed is required. You need to make sure you use enough draw on the shot. If you don't, you might end up too straight on the 7, like this. If you have trouble getting enough draw, you can go off 4 rails instead, like this. With a small angle on the 7, like this, firm stun brings you into a good line for the 8. This is an ideal angle for the 7, where softer stun works great. The slower speed makes the pocket play bigger. You can also use top left spin to go off the side rail, but the action of this shot will vary some depending on whether you hit the ball first or cushion first, as we saw in the previous video. With a small angle on the 8 like this, you need to use more speed to get around the table, but it is easier to get the amount of draw you want before the cue ball hits the first rail. Obviously. Everything we looked at with the 6-ball shot also applies to the 8-ball shot, since they are symmetrical. The original intent for this layout was to require you to go off 3 rails as shown in the diagram. However, you are allowed to take any path from the 6 to the 7 and the 8 to the 9, as long as the cue ball goes off any 3 rails in the process. Here's an example where I ended up too straight. I can use top right spin to go 3 rails. The result isn't perfect, but I make it work with running spin. It is also okay to bump any balls in the layouts. Here's another example where an alternative 3 rail path is required, in this case with inside stun. This is the first of three 8 ball layouts, the last three of the challenge. As with most of the 8-ball layouts, there are many reasonable runout patterns, but this one seems the simplest and most straightforward. You can start like this, coming off the rail into the line of the 12. Or you can simply roll into the line from the short side. Here, you could just stun down table, but I decided to use top right spin to come off the side rail. Again, there are many ways to get out from here. There are many reasonable runout patterns for this layout too, but it is probably best to clear the 10 and 15 early since the obstacle balls block access some, which can cause trouble later. And any of the balls up table is an excellent key ball for the 8. Here's my favorite runout pattern for this layout. I meant to leave a little more angle on the 9 to roll into a natural angle to the 13, but I make up for it with left spin. I meant to leave an angle on the 11, also, to naturally go off two rails to the 8, as we'll see later, but I can easily draw back for the 8. Again, there are many viable plan Bs in these 8-ball layouts, especially if you choose a good pattern that offers lots of options. Here's the angle and shot I like on the 9-ball. If you end up really straight on the 9, you can draw back for the 11 or 13. Here's a good end game approach, saving the 11 as the key ball. And here's a good way to set up the 11 from the 13. Here's the natural path off the 11 to the 8 that I mentioned earlier. And here are alternative ways to get from the 11 to the 8 depending on the angle you leave. Here's the straight draw option we saw earlier. Here's follow off one rail. 
Here's top left spin off two rails. Here is bottom left spin off four rails. Again, the 11 is a good key ball offering many options. The 13 is also a good key ball, getting to it from the 12 and 11. And regardless of the angle on the 13, you can still get to the 8. Here with straight draw. Here with top right spin off 3 rails. And here with bottom left spin off 2 rails. The 12 is also a good key ball. Here going off 2 rails with top left spin. Here, with bottom right spin off three rails. Here, with top left spin off four rails. And here, simply stunning straight down table. The nine is also an excellent key ball. Here's the natural one rail path. If the nine is too straight, you can cheat the pocket and use right spin to head down to the eight. If you have the wrong angle on the 9, you can stun forward with inside spin off two rails. Or stun off two rails with outside spin. Again, there are many good key ball options and alternative cue ball paths in this layout based on angles you leave on shots. Here's the final layout. A good start is rolling forward into an angle on the 11. Here, top left spin is a good way to get to the 9. It is best to end up straight on the 9, but if you come up short or go long, you can shoot the 13 next instead. Slight draw gives a good angle to roll forward on the 13. The 10 is an excellent key ball with top left spin going perfectly into the line of the 8. Another option on the 11 is to stun back some. It is also okay to leave the 8 long since it is a hanger. The 12 is also a good key ball with simple follow coming off the side rail. You can also simply stun straight down table. I hope you got some good tips from the video and are excited to enter the placement pool challenge. Be sure to watch the other videos in the series. And if you want or need more help with 8-ball and 9-ball strategy and position play, see the videos and info at the links in the video description. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.